Hi, welcome to Endura Power's Garage. I'm Jeff Landers. Today I brought in my 1987 Volkswagen Synchro Camper. This is a favorite among camping enthusiasts all over the world. So in my Synchro setup here, I have two batteries. I have a battery that's in, under the passenger seat, which is the main battery. A lot of Vanagon users, a lot of people that just have one battery would have a battery there. On the other side, I've got more of a coach battery that runs some of the accessories that I have. And then we're also gonna put a big, large uh, 100 amp hour battery in the back seat. So with this unit here, it's really cool and neat how you have this mount. You mount this, you put the battery in, you put this in, you bolt it down. It's really a nice, clean way to do it under the seat. It actually gives me enough space to put a little toolkit under the passenger seat instead of having it stowed in the back. But what I want to do is put this as the coach battery, or more the battery that's going to run the accessories. The problem is the way that this is put together, you have this mount here. You see that mount there? And it will not lay on its side in this tray and I need to be able to do that to secure it in the synchro. What I've done though is because on the side of this it's got a little bit of a gap here. I'm going to take this mount off. I've got battery mat. I use this all the time under batteries when I'm using lead acid or any, really any kind of battery. It's just a protective thing. I've cut a piece off here and I'm going to slide it in there to keep that gap the same. And for speed's sake I've already taken the two of these screws off so I can basically flip these out like that and I'm going to pick the battery up, slide the base out and now I've got the base I'll put it put to the side for future use maybe I want to put this in another vehicle and mount it a different way. So what I'm going to do right now is really kind of show you how to set this up. I'm going to take this battery back and set it to the side. So let's show you how to put this be able to mount this battery in like this. I'm gonna set this battery to the side. Just picked up a couple of pieces at the hardware store, a couple of little screws here, long one here, short one here, and uh, one to meet them. This so they meet, right? The reason I do this is because sometimes when you're mounting this close in, it's really hard to get that screw. It's impossible to get your hand down here because maybe you've got a piece of sheet metal here. So instead, I'm going to take these. Now I'm going to put this through here on all four. So now this has a little bit better ability for me to take the battery then, place it in here, place the, this on the battery, and then drop these in and attach it there securely. If I was doing this on a Baja if I was doing this on something that was really going to be fast off-road I probably wouldn't mount it this way. I believe this is secure however I think it is more secure in the regular standard mount or having it upright mounted with a traditional automotive style battery holder. So you'll see more of this as we continue this install in the synchro. Okay, now we're going to show the installation of the other battery. This is under the seat. I don't want to ever short out one of these batteries. Fits in just like that, pretty snug. And what we're going to do is take the negative and just kind of park it down here. So we're going to hook the positive up first. I'm going to negative. I'm going to go ahead and I think I'm going to go ahead and attach the mounting plate to it. Let's see. Goes like that, and I've got these long screws that I've already done. I showed you a little while ago, and put those in there. Same time, we're talking about just this battery here is 1200 cold cranking amps and 40 amp hours, which is, which is really good for you know running stuff. Well, again, we're going to put a big coach battery in the back. I'm going to hook the front first. And there you go. Checking my wires here just for clearances and things like that. I do have a volt meter. You know, it's a volt meter there showing me right now, 13.1 volts. That actually would draw up power too. I do have the smart app that I can use. And again, I'm kind of kind of look at this, make sure I don't have any 
think it's going to hit hard. Look at that fit. I've actually got a little space here for something if I want to stow something in there. Um, but that's, that's pretty much ready to go. Okay, so we are now going to push this back. One thing I'm going to do is I'm going to I open the Endura Power app and I'm looking right now to see this is a synchro equipment battery that I just put in and as you can tell, let's see if it's got a drain. Yeah, it is actually. It's pumping out 1.2 amps right now. That's probably all the interior lights that are on, um, but that's basically what it's doing right now. And when I start it up, we'll see if it changes. It should. bit of a charge. Not a lot, but a little bit of a charge. Took a few minutes to respond. But it's, uh, looks like it's doing pretty well. So both these batteries are working well. One thing I can't express enough is that you really need to make sure you use a proper charger for lithium iron phosphate batteries. Don't try using a regular automotive charger or one of the trickle chargers that you have because it can really do damage to this expensive battery. Well, I hope you enjoyed this edition of Endura Powers Garage. Look forward to seeing you again. Thanks so much. If for all the information on all of our batteries, visit us at endurapower.com.